Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, uh, today, uh, Rachel, our church secretary, has gone on vacation, so she'll be on vacation until late next week. Um, so it's just me here in the office. So be gentle. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me, feel free to give me a call. Send emails to the church account. I will be checking the church's emails, checking the church's voicemails, doing my best to keep up with the administration of the church while Rachel is on vacation. It's also Rachel's birthday today. So happy birthday, Rachel. And Helen Biela's birthday today as well. Happy birthday, Helen. Helen, Rachel, we love you guys so much. We're so glad that you're part of our fellowship. Pray that God blesses you both today on your birthday and that you would know that you are loved by God and by God's people. Happy, happy birthday, Helen and Rachel. Um, we don't have any other activities planned for today, but I did want to say that at uh, September 25th, I think that's in three weeks, three weeks from today, at 9.30 a.m. starts our Ladies Deeper Life group up again. So Ladies Deeper Life group starts up September 25th here at the church. And in one week at 7 p.m. Uh, next Wednesday starts our deep dive Bible study in the Gospel of Mark. So uh, that's going to be starting up. Uh, if you're a lady, you're eligible for the ladies Bible study. If you're a lady or a fella, you're you're uh, eligible for the uh deep dive Bible study into the book of Mark. Um, there are Mark manuscripts that are available here at the church to pick up uh, and uh, three ring binders and such so that you can um, do so you can take part in this Bible study. Uh, you don't need any of those materials prior to next Wednesday, but if you have them, you can use them and we'll be we'll start studying the second half of the Gospel of Mark. Uh, also very excited I got on Sunday I got my first stump the chump form back and so, uh, believe it or not, the, I, I read the, the Stump the Chump form and I thought, well, it's really lucky I wrote a book about this. <laughs> so somebody's been asking about the topic of my book. And so I think it's a pretty fair bet that that one is going to make it into Stump the Chump. With Stump the Chump, you offer your own suggestions for sermons uh, that you think are stumpers or questions you've always wanted to ask but have not had the chance or passages that have come up that you uh, don't understand, um, any of those things, and no question is off limits, feel free to ask it. I'll do my best to answer it from the scriptures and um, I'll choose which ones I'll be preaching on. I got six Sundays set aside for uh, Stump the Chump. So the, my, my favorite six topics will, uh, will be covered during Stump the Chump. So if you've got it, uh, come on in, fill out a Stump the Chump form. You can also send an email to the church office with, uh, with your Stump the Chump suggestions as well. All right, well, on Sunday, I preached out of Exodus chapter 15. And in this chapter, Exodus 15, the people of Israel are celebrating between, because God had led them across the Red Sea on dry ground. God had split the Red, the Red Sea miraculously. And uh, with a wall of water on the left and a wall of water on the right, they walked across, the, the people of Israel walked across the bottom of the Red Sea on dry ground. And when the Egyptians tried to follow them, uh, God allowed those walls to collapse back and swallow up the Egyptians, uh, killing the entire Egyptian army that was trying to kill them. And so they reached the other side, the people of Israel reached the other side, and they celebrate uh, and they sing praises to God. And if you look through this, and it's a, it's a, it's a psalm of praise to God. So it's poetic and it's, it's a song, you know. Um, but if you look at it, it, it basically breaks down into two assertions in this psalm. One is that God, that Yahweh, is the king above all kings. And the other one is that he is the God above all gods. And we'll talk about king above all kings today and God above all gods tomorrow. I said something in my sermon on Sunday, which may have thrown you for a loop. I said that uh, if you say that God is the king above all kings, you are making a political statement. Now, it's pretty common these days for us to think that political means partisan. 
making a political statement. It means you're endorsing either the Democratic Party candidate or the Republican Party candidate or some other candidate. Um, but that's those are different things, right? The political parties in our country are groups of people who gather together to uh, attempt to enact their uh, favorite policies, or the policies they think will be best for the country, um, in theory, right? Uh, in practice, sometimes they try to enact the, the policies that are best for them, right? Uh, but in any event, uh, the parties are one part of our political system, but when God gets political, he's not part of our political system. Uh, God is above our political system. So when God gets political, it mean, what it means is that God is sovereign, that God rules over all humanity, not just in a spiritual sense, but in a physical, this world, temporal sense. I had a friend the other day who asked me what psalm would I use to talk about the Republican and Democratic parties. Uh, this friend had uh, quoted a psalm on Facebook that they felt was specifically uh, described well one of those two parties. And I asked them, you know, what would, uh, what psalm would describe the other party? And they got kind of upset with me and thought I was being snarky. Um, and they asked me, well, what, what psalm do you think describes uh, these political parties? And I said, well, I, I always look at Psalm 146. And here's, here's what I, here's what Psalm 146 says. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. My friend said, uh, well, that's, that's talking about uh, spiritual life, that it uses the word salvation there, right? And it's saying that no man can save your soul, right? So don't put any trust in princes to save your soul. And if you're trying to use that, they said, uh, about uh, politics, then you're just being cynical. But let's, let's look at the passage. So do you tell me, is this about salvation of your soul? It says, put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. What salvation is this about? When his breath departs, who's, who is he here? Well, he is the son of man that they're talking about, the, the prince, the human prince, right? When, when the human prince breath departs, he dies, right? He returns to the earth. And on that very day, his plans perish. What plans? He's talking about his, his spiritual plans, right? When his breath departs, he returns to the earth on that very day, his religious plans perish? Because if this is about spiritual salvation, salvation of your soul, then his plans must have to do with kind of religion or spirituality. But that's not what this passage is saying. What this passage is saying is, yeah, like this, this human prince has plenty of plans for their country, right? For their nation, uh, plenty of plans on how to make things better, how to do things right. Uh, but those plans perish when they die. The salvation that it's talking about here is not spiritual salvation. Of course, there's no spiritual salvation in human princes. What it's saying here is that there's not even any this worldly salvation in human princes. Human princes, their plans are only as good as their breath, right? As long as their breath remains, they can hold these plans, but they're not going to be able to carry out their this world plans uh, if their breath leaves them. I would argue that what this is saying is that we shouldn't put our trust in this world in physical, political rulers. We shouldn't trust them to make their country better because they don't even have control over their own life. Uh, they can't do the things that they're promising to do unless the Lord enables them to do it. God is the king over the kings of this earth.
Here's what it says in another psalm, Psalm 47, verses 5 through 9. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with a sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his heavenly throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. What is this about? Is this about our spiritual life, right? Sing praises to God, sing praises to our king. Is God our spiritual king? I'm not even sure what that means. God is our spiritual king. God is the king of all the earth. God reigns over the nations. Does that just mean that God uh, offers salvation, uh, soul salvation, spiritual salvation to the nations? I don't think so. Uh, because it says, I mean, it says that the, the princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. They gather to follow God. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Uh, we have a family in our church known as the shields, right? And Joe and Sarah shields. The shields of the earth belong to our God. The shields of the earth do belong to our God. Let's talk about physical military equipment, right? That belongs to God. God is the king. He's the king over military matters, right? Remember in, in, in Exodus 15, it says that our God is a man of war. They're praising God not for his spiritual salvation in Exodus 15. They're praising God for his temporal salvation in Exodus 15. They're praising God because the Egyptian army was swallowed up by the sea. Not metaphorically, but literally. God is their king, literally, because he literally led them out of Egypt. He literally led them into battle, a battle where they did not have to fight. God fought, literally, on Israel's behalf. When, is when Egypt's chariots and horses and horsemen washed up dead on the seashore, that's not a metaphor for your problems being taken away. Uh, it was a literal event that literally happened. God demonstrated that he was the king over Israel because he led them step by step, literal step by literal step, and he fought literal battles for them. The Bible is not talking about God as the king of kings in kind of an airy spiritual sense. God is the king over kings on this earth. When the Bible says that God is king of kings, it's making a political claim saying that ultimately your allegiance as God's follower is to God on this earth and not to the nations of the earth. God is the one who sits on the throne of the kingdom of which you are a part. And you, if you are belong to God, you and I are both subjects of that kingdom. And not just in a spiritual sense. I'm a physical person. If you know me personally, you can come and shake my hand. I have a hand. I've got way too, way a lot, a whole lot of physical reality to me. Okay. Um, now there are spiritual realities that connect us as well, but physically we are citizens of his kingdom, which means that he is the one who's in charge of what we do on this earth. Not just about the prayers that we pray, not just about the songs that we sing in church, not just about uh, you know, our discipleship in, in a spiritual sense, but in a real this world sense. He's in charge of your money. He's in charge of your time. He's in charge of your talents. He's in charge of your vote. He's in charge of your politics. Now, as pastor, I do not endorse candidates or political parties. And I don't do endorse candidates or political parties because I believe that God is our king. That doesn't mean I don't belong to a political party. It doesn't mean that I don't vote in elections. I do. I have the privilege uh, and responsibility of being a citizen of the United States, which means I have a vote and I'm supposed to use it. My, I cast my vote as best as I can in prayer, uh, in consultation with the God who is my king, because my vote belongs to him. And he tells me how to use it. 
He tells you how to use yours. And if he tells me how to use mine to vote for one candidate and tells you how to use yours to vote for a different candidate, that's okay. <laughs> it's not my responsibility what he tells you. My responsibility is what he tells me. Well, why would God uh, tell you to vote for one candidate and me to vote for a different candidate? Doesn't, isn't God you know, concerned about who wins? I guess he is, yeah, but, but maybe he's concerned about other stuff too. Maybe he's concerned about your heart and, and, and why you make the decisions that you make. Maybe God is concerned about your faithfulness and mine. Maybe God is concerned that you follow him and I follow him, even if uh, he gives us uh, instructions that might to us seem con uh, contradictory. That's okay, because he's re he is responsible for what he tells you, and he's responsible for what he tells me. God is the king of all kings, the king above all kings. And that has to do with life in this world. Tomorrow we'll talk about how God is, uh, Yahweh is the God above all gods. Now that's a spiritual claim. But king above all kings, that's, that's a physical claim. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the king above all kings. And thank you that that means that we have to follow you in this world with our this worldly resources time, talent, treasure, our vote, our children, our family, our relationships, our allegiance is to you. And we're to follow you in all that we say and do. And we're responsible to you for our vote and to no one else. God, I pray that you bless the people here within the sound of my voice. I pray that this hard teaching, it's hard to get our brains around this because we're taught that, that God is king in a spiritual sense. But God is king in a literal sense. I pray that you'd help us to get our brains around that because that's a toughie. God, I pray for uh, Rachel and Helen on their birthdays. Please bless them, encourage them, strengthen them in every way. May they know your love and your presence today. May they be surrounded by the love of their family and friends. May they know that their church loves them and that you love them. Uh, Lord, I pray for everybody within the sound of my voice. May they be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.